Thank you. So I will begin with the notice and instruction. The notice is in reference to the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board certifications pursuant to gubernatorial proclamation by John Bell Edwards in 2020 um, regarding board member participation by telephone or video conference as it relates to school board meetings. Please be advised that due to the pe public health emergency caused by the coronavirus disease, also known as COVID-19, and the stay-at-home orders issued by the President Trump and Governor Edwards, the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board may, for the duration of this emergency, conduct board meetings and committee meetings electronically via telephone and or video conference. The Committee of the Whole meeting, scheduled for today, July 9, 2020, immediately following the board workshop, is streamed live via Microsoft Teams. A link to watch the meeting can be found at Board Docs located on the school board's website. A period for written public comment will be provided for before the board meeting, as well as before each action is taken by the board on an action item. Individuals wishing to make a public comment about any of the posted action items will need to click on the agenda items in Board Docs and submit via highlighted public comment hyperlink on the agenda item details. Upon the closing of the comments, board president will, board vice president will read in the record of the public comments that have been submitted. All right, that is our notes and instructions. To so now, I will call to order the July 9th committee of the whole meeting. At this time, Madam Secretary, would you please conduct the roll? Present. I'm sorry, did you District 7, President Godet? Here. District 3, Vice President Howard? Present. District 1, Mr. Blue? Here. District 2, Mr. Lannis? Here. District 4, Ms. Collins? Ms. Collins? Or Margaret is here because we can see her. Ms. Ware Jackson, District 5? Here. District 8, Ms. B I'm sorry, District 6, Ms. Dyson? District 8, Ms. Bernard. Ms. Bernard. District 9, Mr. Tapman. Present. Thank you, Ms. April. Ms. Armin, we have a quorum. Our first item that we will receive is item number C1, and we will receive it as information only. It is an update from our superintendent, Mr. Drake. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Howard. First, I would like to welcome uh, two new principals to the East Baton Rouge Parish uh, School principalships. They are first, Mr. Robert Signator, who will, will become the interim principal of Glen Oaks High School. Uh, he's formerly the assistant principal at Glen Oaks High School. And also Mr. Rodney Coates, who is uh, formerly the assistant principal at McKinley High School, will now become the principal of the uh, EBR Readiness Middle School, and he was formerly at McKinley High School. So congratulations to Robert Signator, interim principal at Glen Oaks High, and Rodney Coates, interim principal at EBR Readiness Middle School. Uh, just FYI, I'd like you to know that uh, end of course retesting begins next Monday, July 13th at five, five of our high schools. I want to thank our school and district staff who've worked very hard pull this together for our students following the guidance of the State Department of Education, and we wish our students the best of luck on these state exams. That begins next Monday. Also, there's a new charter school opening this year in our district. Uh, we'd like to welcome CSAL Elementary Charter into our family of schools. Staff is supporting their onboarding process currently, and they will be open in August. August, uh, they will be adjacent to the middle school campus, serving students in grades K through two, so uh, welcome uh, CSAL Elementary Charter. Uh, the reopening school plan, we've been working on it very hard. I wanna welcome uh, Leslie Brown, our new superintendent. I think she's listening tonight and she's been working with our staff for the last several weeks and has actually led the uh, senior cabinet meetings over the last three meetings, I believe. The uh, guidance for reopening is coming very soon. And I uh, just want to thank uh, Ms. Brown for all the leadership she's provided here over the last couple of weeks in this transition. I think we'll have a strong continuation in our district. A strong start is uh, started Monday of this week. Just to give you a few data points, uh, 70 schools are participating, uh, 42 school partnerships. We have 652 teachers and 53 paraprofessionals working with close to 6,000 students. 
in the traditional ESS, ESL gifted and magnet programs. And finally, I'd like to congratulate Ms. Ronit Robinson. She is a fourth and fifth grade teacher at the Dufrock School. She is the recipient of the National University System Sanford Teacher Award for Louisiana. That is the only one in, in the state. Uh, they pick up the big state. I said, go, <laughs> go Ms. Ware Jackson. Ms. <laughs> Robinson, fourth and fifth grade teacher. She will receive $10,000 to support her cause. And the Sanford Teacher Award for Louisiana and one for each state focuses on teachers who develop social and emotional skills in their school. She is now eligible to win $50,000 towards her program. So that is all, thank you. Oh, Mr. Howard, your mic is not on. Is it good now? Yeah. OK, for whatever reason, my uh, my computer has a, a delay in it. Sorry about that. Um, so we will move on to our next item. Our next item is a item for consideration. It is a grant on um, the recommended action is a consideration of a request for the approval for the following grants. The Painted Playground Community Partner Grant between the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board and the Junior League of Baton Rouge in the amount of $20,000 for elementary school beautification and early childhood, excuse me, Strong Start COVID-19 Community Relief Grant in the amount of $400,000 to provide assistance to child care assistance centers. May I entertain a motion? Um, I see a motion by Mr. David Tapman and a second by Ms. Evelyn Ware Jackson. Are there any comments from the board, questions from the board? Mr. Landis. I'm sorry, I won't be long. Ms. Okowski, are you available? Are you on right now with us? I am here. I just had a really quick question. Uh, the grant sure. for the beautification of the elementary schools, is they're sure. going to be out across multiple campuses? Yes, they have not been selected yet. And what we typically do is implore the help of Ms. Lynn Williamson to help us evaluate and assess the play areas of our schools. And we try to spread them out geographically. We try to cover as many different board areas. We do them by your board areas, actually. And if we can cover one in each, that's how we're going to stretch the dollars to do it. OK, and then just for paint, is that, for, is that for playground or equipment or anything like that also? Uh, they do painting and stencil. They can do some smaller items, but 20, you know, playground equipment can get right. a little expensive. So we try to stretch it as best we can. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you, Mr. Landis. Thank you, Ms. Okonski. Um, Ms. Armin, um, I just want to let you know that the uh, the public comment link is not loading into my system. So if you can send it to my other email, um, that would be great. Um, and if you can also check it for this particular item to see if there are any public comments before we move on. There are no public comments for this item. Thank you, Ms. Armin. Um, seeing no public comments, we will return back to the board. Seeing no additional requests, Madam Secretary, if you would please open up the machine to vote. Please vote. Everybody remember you have to switch into the other meeting. Mr. Blue. Yes. Mr. Lannis. Yes. Also, April, uh, it's not popping up on my screen, so I just have to use a verbal. So, yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Ware Jackson? Yes. Mr. Godet? Yes. Ms. Bernard? Yes. Mr. Tapman? Yes. The motion carries. 
The motion carries. Our next item for consideration is a professional service contracts federal. The recommended action is a consideration of a request for the approval of the professional service contracts between the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board and the following. Nearpod in the amount of $154,630 to provide literacy lessons. The funding source is Title IV. Avid in the amount of $19,639 to provide professional service development and support in creating a ninth grade academy at Barmore High School. The funding source is School Redesign. Great Minds in the amount of $25,500 to provide mathematics professional development. The funding source is School Redesign. Teaching Lab in the amount of $25,225 to provide ELL professional development. The funding source is school redesign. One goal in the amount of 45,000 to provide program training and materials, funding source school redesign, and empower schools in the amount of 100,000 to provide innovative zone strategic funding source school redesign um, is also the funding source for this particular item. At this moment, I'll entertain a motion. So moved by Mr. Lannis and seconded by Mr. Ballou. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Mr. Landis, is your RTS an ORTS or is that current? OK, um, are there any additional comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, Ms. Orman, if you could let me know about the public comment. I just resent it to you. We have one public comment for this item. OK, give me one second to pull that okay. up. OK, one second. OK, um, the public comment is from Ms. Maria Harmon. It says, please consider voting no on these contract. Number one, one goal professional development, 45,000. Two great minds, Eureka Math, 25,500. Abbott Charter, um, Abbott Center, excuse me, Barmore Ninth Grade Academy, only $29,639. These contracts do not uphold the true meaning of implementing equity in the school district. One goal is an unnecessary contract with tasks that can be carried out by EBR school district, not a third party entity. This would be an inefficient use of tax dollars. Great Minds is an undesirable contract because Eureka Math is ineffective and has been has been proven to been proven to be a practical and relevant curriculum to our children. Again, this is an insufficient use of tax dollars. Avid Center program could be used at every public school in EBR. Why is the priority brought more high? Let's develop a plan that will be fair and accessible for students who needs it. I will refresh to ensure that there are no additional public comments. Seeing none, uh, we will go back to the board. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Seeing no additional requests and comments from the board, uh, Madam Secretary, if you could please open the voting machine. Mr. Blue? Yes. Mr. Lannis? Yay. Mr. Howard? Yes. Ms. Collins? Abstain. Ms. Moore Jackson? Yes. Mr. Goday? Yes. Ms. Bernard? Yes. Mr. Tatman? Yes. The item carries. Our next item for consideration is a architect selection um, for the University Terrace Buchanan, excuse me, elementary. It is a consideration of a request for the approval of the Architectural Selection Committee's recommendation of RHH Architects, APAC, to provide architectural design consulting services 
for the University Terrace School Project Funding Source. Fu uh, excuse me, funding source is the tax plan. At this moment, I'll entertain a motion. So moved by Mr. Tadman and seconded by Mr. Godet. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? I do not see any questions or comments from the board. I will go to the public comment at this time. Um, and so there was a new comment that came um, before I read the last motion, but I will just read it into the record for the sake of um, having it on the record. This is not relevant to the motion that we are speaking on now. Um, it says, this is from Karanda Curley in re reference to the last motion. I strongly disagree with the following. One go, great mayons and Abbott Sanders. Please do not vote something that does not add ch all children and staff. Um, there are no additional comments for the item that we are currently on. Madam Secretary, if you would please open up the machines. Back to the board. I'm sorry, back to the board. Right, where questions? Jackson has a comment. Okay, my screen froze again. Thank you, Ms. Armin. Ms. Ware Jackson. Um, I wanted to ask about the the backup on the, um, it seemed like the backup was kind of light on the, the um, University Terrace Buchanan. Um, we used to get the information about the, uh, the makeup of the committee and who the candidates were and what kind of points they got and on this one we didn't we didn't get in or I, I didn't see anything other than than this one document with just the recommendation and i'm just wondering if, if we can get back to um getting some details more details on these thanks yes, ma'am ma yeah we'll provide more information uh this inf this this matter was handled by mr williams who's out of town tonight um, I don't believe he's available. Um, I do know that the committee composition, we have that on hand. I don't have it in front of me, but I can send that to the board so you'll have it and we can also post it as well. Um, and the decision was made based on the RFP document that went out. So I can get that information for you and send it to you digitally. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I also have the same question. So it went through the, um, the standard RFP procurement process and where the, the bidder was selected based off of that process or was what did the committee have some kind of additional leeway to make selections outside of the traditional standard RFP process? Well, with it, to answer your question simply, the RFP, this went through the RFP process and the scoring requirements in the document we used to make the selection. Um, in any RFP process, there's a committee of people selected to work the process itself, and they can consider any one of a number of factors, including what his scoring requirements are in the document. So to answer your question, in this case, we looked at the document, looked at the scoring requirements, and this firm met those requirements and the selection was made. But I can get you the actual document so you can see it. Um, yeah, that would, that would be ex uh, extremely helpful. And also, if and, and this is for future reference, not related to this uh, selection, if I can have a, uh, and this is for my own education and clarification, if I can have an um, understanding of what our RFP process looks like, because I mean, in, in traditional state procurement, most of the time it's lowest bidder, there's no additional selection committees. Um, so if that we can have like an, a policy outline of what our RFP in the district includes, that would be helpful for me to make future decisions. So thank you. I'll yeah, I'll ask our procurement director to send that to the entire board. Thank you. Um, seeing uh, Mr. Godet. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, provide a comment because I, I see people crossing RFPs with RFQs. Uh, RFPs is a request for proposal, and that is covers purchases and all of those types of things where that is governed by state law with the lowest bidder. Architects and other professional services are RFQs, which follows a different process, and it's not a lowest bid win type process. It's looking at qualifications and all of the things that go into that. So uh, not, not any comment on this particular thing. I think the things you guys are, are requesting is totally appropriate, and I would like to see it also. But I just want to draw the distinction, particularly for the public, <clears throat> between an RFP, which is a low bid process, and an RFQ, which is a selection process where 
price is only part of the factor because we have no idea what the final cost of the school is going to be or anything like that. But it's it's looking at qualifications and looking at proposals that they're putting together. So they're two related processes, but different. So I just wanted to make sure everyone's clear on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Godet, and I just want to clarify that I'm very clear on that. I was a RFP director um, for the state of Louisiana for quite some time, so I'm very clear. So I thank you for uh, extending that qualification um, and clarification to the public. Um, our next item for consideration, uh, give me one moment. My computer is acting crazy. Is the disaster recovery grant? We take sorry, a vote. Mr. Howard, we need oh, to vote. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, and I, I was, uh, I, I wanted to. Oh, and she has one more question. Sorry, hold on one second, guys. My computer is is doing its own <laughs> magical. Go ahead, Ms. Ward Jackson. Go ahead, Ms. Ward Jackson. Um, I I just wanted to 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 say. Uh, oh, in addition to to that, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Gode, for uh, bringing that up for the audience who you know didn't know the differences between those two. You know, uh, I appreciate that, and uh, also um, with relationship to to those differences. Um, I think I'd like to know what our board policy is regarding the committee that's chosen to uh, decide what what companies are, are chosen in, under these uh, contracts. Um, just just to know, you know, from a, a board members uh, point of view or, or relationship to it, just knowing um, what our policy is with regard to um, who is on those committees that select those different companies. OK, uh, Mr. Shamlin, when you're getting the information. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you the policies and the procedures. I think what you were referring to may be a process or a procedure that that we put into practice when we mm -hmm. select committees, but I'll get both of those for the board and send to everyone. Yeah, especially with regard to to board members and particular districts and the relationship that. that sure. Comes. OK, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. R. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Godet. Thank you, Mr. Shamlin. Um, and now we will take a vote. Are there any additional questions before we take our vote? Seeing none, Madam Secretary. Please vote. Is it? Mr. Blue? Yes. Mr. Lannis? Yay. Mr. Howard? Yes. Ms. Collins? Yay. Ms. Ware Jackson? Ms. Ware Jackson? Sorry, I'm still on mute. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Godet? Yes. Ms. Bernard? Yes. Mr. Tatman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Armin. Our next item for consideration is a disaster recovery um, grant. It is a consideration of request to accept the recommendation of CSRS Tillage as the disaster recovery grant manager fee for services not to exceed $1 million. Um, this is, yeah, that's the recommended action. At this time, I will take a motion. Uh, I see uh, Mr. Lannis and second by Ms. Collins. Um, is there any questions or comments from the board? Seeing no request to speak, um, that was item D4. I will go to public comments to see if there are any additional public comments. Um, and one second again, my computer is doing its own thing. Um, there are no public comments from this um, for this particular item. Uh, we will go back to the board or are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Seeing none. Um, Madam Secretary. Please vote. Mr. 
Mr. Blue. Yes. Mr. Lannis. Yay. Mr. Howard. Yes. Ms. Collins. My computer is in and out too. Um, yay. <laughs> Ms. Ward Jackson. Yes. Mr. Godet. Yes. Ms. Bernard. Yes. Mr. Tatman. Yes. The item Motion carries. carries. Oh, sorry, Miss. Sorry, Miss <laughs> Our next item for consideration is item D five. Um, it is once again my computer. One second. It is item D five. It is a co-op co agreement. Um, it is a consideration of a request for the approval of the cooperative agreement between the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board and Capital Area Human, Human Services District Baton Rouge Mental Health Center Children's Behavior Health Services. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. So moved by Mr. Tatman, second by Mr. Lannis. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Ms. Collins? Ms. Collins. Are you raising your hand? Can you, yes. Can, okay. you, can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am. I can. can. Okay, because it's still showing. It looks like it's mute on my side. I need to, for the record, recuse myself from this item. Okay. Ms. Collins is recusing herself from this item. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, I will check the public comments. There are no public comments on this item. Um, I will go back to the board. Are there any additional questions or comments from this item? Ms. Collins has recused herself from this item. Um, seeing none, Madam Secretary. Please vote. Mr. Blue? Yes. Can you press your button, Mr. Blue? Or are you frozen? Got it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lannis? Yay. Mm, Mr. Howard? Yes. Ms. Collins? Ms. Ware Jackson? Yes. Mr. Godet? Mr. Godet? Yes. Ms. Bernard? Yes. Mr. Tatman? Yes. The item carries. Our next item for consideration is item number D6. It is a contract with Illuminate Education. The item calls for <clears throat> a consideration of a request for the approval of a contract between the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board and Illuminate Education for a system-wide benchmarking assessment platform. The funding source is federal programs and it's just coming from our CARES Act um, money. Are there any questions or comments from the board? All right, first I'll entertain a motion, I'm sorry. Mr. Godet moves, Mr. Ballou seconds. Now, are there any questions or comments from the board? Um, I do have a question if there are no additional questions. Uh, Ms. Okonski, if you could just clarify, um, I see that we're utilizing this for benchmark assessment and we there has not been any um, statewide conversations as of yet as of, that I know of uh, related to what assessment is going to look like. So how will we be determining what are we utilizing for benchmark assessment or how does that fit into like this whole idea of um, accountability and assessments as it relates to um, testing. Sure. Thank you for that question. So what this does is this gives us access to a scan and score platform for our early grades who take paper based tests and computer based testing for grades three and up. And so what we will do is we will use this for our diagnostic and placement testing 
proficiency testing, and then we'll use it to benchmark kids along the way. As you guys can appreciate now more than ever, it's important for us to know where our students stand upon entry into this next school year. And so this platform allows us to do it virtually and remotely if we should need to. Uh, but again, for those uh, younger grades who need the paper and pencil, it gives us a scan and score platform. Uh, a teacher can make their own test on it and can and put it in there and it can mimic the uh, computer-based testing items that they would see on the leap, LEAP test. Or we can pull from their bank of over 500 pre-made tests or 65,000 test items all aligned to Louisiana curriculum and the four content areas and standards in the content areas. Thank you. And, and once this is um, once this meeting is over, if, I, if you would engage me in a conversation related to um, school assessment and, and what happens either way or how we sure. get this based off of what's happening, that would be appreciative. Thank you so sure. much. Sure. Just let me know. Thank you. Um, are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Mr. Lanus, is that a current? Go ahead. Yes, Ms. Okowski, just for the record, this is uh, paid for with the CARES Act funding that we're receiving, correct? Yes, sir. This is an eligible expenditure out of there and it will it will pay for it for this year. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lance. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Seeing no additional questions or comments from the board, I will check. Uh, Ms. Jones, is that you telling me that there are no comments for item D6? I'm sorry, I see that, but I'm not sure if I'm reading it correctly. I will refresh just in case. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Um, so we'll go back to the board. Are there any additional questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Secretary. Please vote. Mr. Blue? Yes. Mr. Lannis? Yay. Mr. Howard? Yes. Ms. Collins? Yay. Ms. Ware Jackson? Yes. Ms. Bernard? Ms. Bernard? Yes. Ms. Bernard. Thank you. Mr. Tapman? Yes. This is Mr. Godet. I vote yes also. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Godet. <laughs> <laughs> the motion carries. Shame on you, Miss Miss Armin. Um, <laughs> next item for consideration is item number D7. It is the Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire. It is a consideration of a request for the approval of the Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire as required for the 2019-2020 Financial Audit of the East Baton Rouge Parish School System. This is brought forward by Mr. Crochet. Um, I'll entertain a motion at this time. So moved by Mr. Godet, seconded by Mr. Ballou. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Lannis. Yes, Mr. Crochet, are you available? Yes, sir. You know, we don't get to see you much these days, so I just wanted to tell you we appreciate all the hard work that you do. Thank you, sir. Appreciate <laughs> no it. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Lannis. Thank you, Mr. Crochet. Um, seeing no additional questions or comments from the board, seeing that Ms. Jones is telling me that D7 also has no public comments, um, we will go back to the board. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Seeing no additional questions or comments from the board, Madam Secretary. Please vote. Mr. Blue? Yes. Mr. Lannis? Yay. Mr. Howard? Yes. Ms. Collins? Ms. Yes. Collins? Yay. <laughs> Yay. Ms. Ware Jackson? Yes. Mr. Godet? Yes. Ms. Bernard? Yes. Mr. Tatman? Yes. The item carries. Our last item for consideration is the D8. It is a, excuse me, I'm going back and forth between screens. It is a 2021 healthcare and ancillary benefits. It is a consideration 
It is a consideration of request for the approval slash authorization of the following. Proposed 2021 healthcare rates for active employees, non-Medicare and Medicare eligible retirees participating in the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana administrated, administered medical plans for the core and buy-up, proposed 2021 healthcare rates and plan design changes for active non-Medicare and Medicare eligible retirees participating in the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana administered medical plan for Community Blue, proposed 2021 2022 healthcare rates for the Medicare retirees participating in the Humana Medicare Advantage HMO and PPO plans, proposed 2021 Celerix month, monthly fee to continue HRIS system administration of all benefits for active non-Medicare and medical eligible retirees, authorize the superintendent staff to negotiate and execute the 2021 contract renewal with the wage works healthy equity for flexible spending slash COBRA administration, authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the 2021 contract for stop loss insurance coverage. And there's an amendment, amendment, excuse me, for the approval of Express Scripts programs, Rational May Save On SP Advanced Opioid Affordable Care Act, HIV Prevention Coverage and HIV Care Value Program. Um, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. I see a motion by Mr. Lannis and a second. I can't see everyone's screen. Second by Ms. Gode. Mr. Gode, excuse me. Uh, Ms. Work, Ms. Collins, do you have a question or comment? You're still muted. <laughs> Gotcha. Ready. OK, sorry, a okay. huge delay on my side. Um, question as to the um, contract that district has with Blue Cross Blue Shield and the contract that we have with Mercer. When, when is it time to review those and consider for renewal? OK, Ms. Collins, we do have a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, PowerPoint Mercy, presentation. Is going to take us through, if, if that's OK with okay. you guys. That's, and if they could just answer those, if I can yes, get the answer can to those questions. Yes, I ain't going to have too many other questions, because every time I ask questions, I just kind of, you know, it's like whatever. So I'm not going to waste y'all time this year. I just want to know when we can revisit some stuff. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Aaron Burkhardt. He's an actuary with Mercer and also uh, Andrea Bryan. She's a pharmacy specialist and they should be on the line right now. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear and see me? Excellent. Yeah. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to present to you and we'll be talking about the employee benefits. Um, I believe Shang was going to pull up the presentation and share the screen for us to walk through. Excellent, thank you. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, so what we want to talk about is the benefit plan. So on the on the self-funded medical plans, which is which are offered to the actives and um, retiree plans, uh, we're proposing a premium increase of 9.9 percent on those plans um, due to um, some some kind of trend expected for next year and lower headcount. And we'll get into more details on a later slide. As for the community blue plan. The, the idea here um, with the big decrease is kind of realigning that plan to help meet some employee needs based on feedback we received when that plan was put in place last year. One of my other colleagues will go into some of these ESI programs on a, um, a more detailed basis, but the, the purpose of these programs are to help manage um, expected spend with pharmacy. Uh, finally, the Medicare Advantage plans with Humana are up for renewal. And, uh, Sorry, Mr. Burkhardt, yep. if I may, and I, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt your presentation, um, and I just want to clarify with my colleague, Ms. Ms. Collins. Um, Ms. Collins, your concern is not necessarily about the details of this particular plan, but when we as a district has an opportunity to revisit our contract with this provider as a collective, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, in particular, uh, Mercer, 
And I know that we are a self-funded district, but Blue Cross manages. And I just want to make sure, you know, I've been doing research and I, I've always expressed that I want to make sure we're doing the best we can. Uh, and I was more than upset at my own oversight. I'm glad I do participate in the district in, in the same plans that our employees receive and uh without going into any detail I, I was a bit perturbed by a bill i received based on some changes from the previous year and i know that the concerns i lift up uh that shouldn't have happened but that's neither here nor there thank you very much for lifting up my question again i just want to get a better understanding of the of the nature of the relationship and when it can be revisited you know, when is the contract renewal up? Right, so um, I don't know if that's gonna be Mr. Mercer or someone from the collective staff. Um, if you guys could uh, engage Ms. Collins in relations to her concerns about the relationship and as our contractual obligations and we when, when we as a board can revisit that, I'm, I'm not sure. And that, that's not uh, to interrupt your presentation, Mr. Mercer, but it just as a for efficiency point so that our my colleague's question can be answered. So if someone from the staff can engage Ms. Collins in this question, that would be uh, helpful. December, you, December of 2021, I believe, is when the Mercer contract comes up uh, for renewal. I'm not sure about Blue Cross Blue Shield. I can get that information for you. I think Mercer has that information. If Mimi, if you're available, don't you um, have the contract ending date for Blue Cross? Yes, it's it's a it's a three year contract, but it can be it can be revisited annually. But it is it's through 2021. Thank you. Three years. Thank you, Ms. Mimi, and thank you, uh, Mr. Mercer and Mr. Crochet. Uh, Ms. Collins, does that answer your concern? Yes. All right, thank you so much. Are there any additional questions or concerns related to this item from the board? All right, seeing none, I will go to public. Mr. Godet, oh, that's oh. Uh, Mr. Godet, is that a new request? Mr. Goder. Yeah, so are we going to go through the presentation? All right, if you would like to hear the presentation, uh, yes, but uh, the presentation was not relevant to Mrs. Collins's question, so if there are any board members who need oh, to okay. hear the presentation. Sorry. Okay, do you need to hear the presentation, Mr. Goder? Uh, I think the public and I would like to see the presentation prepared by Mercer, yes. So, all right, all right, Mr. Mercer, if you would continue um, your presentation. Sorry for the confusion and the, uh, the interruption. Yeah, no problem. Not at all. Glad to. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. All right, and we can go one more. So as a reminder, it, it, um, as Mr. Collins pointed out, right, the plan is self-funded. What that means, right, is the school system play, pays the claims when the employees or the retirees um, go visit the doctor or the hospital. Blue Cross Blue Shield really administers or processes those claims, but it really comes from the school district's um, um, budget. So as far as the projected budget for 2021 goes, um, the projected number is 67.6 million, which is a 9.9% .9 or $6.1 million increase over 2020. There are a couple of main drivers I wanna call out that, that's driving the increase. The first, um, as you follow in probably the national news, is unfortunately the, the medical environment um, in the United States is highly inflationary. Um, it's not uncommon to see many plans increase at 4 to 8% per year um, annually on, on with medical and, and pharmacy trend combined. Um, so that, you know, that's one cost driver far, which, you know, far exceeds workers' earnings, general inflation. Um, another item is more specifically to do with, with the premium that's being brought in. Um, relating to the headcount that's been on the plan. So if you were to look at um, 2019 versus 2018, the total aggregate costs have actually been pretty steady, which is which is wonderful, not seeing maybe some of that, that trend that, that we might expect. But unfortunately, headcount has dropped over the course of 2019 that was enrolled in the medical plan. And right, the premium is charged per an employee. So every employee has a contribution and then the district pays a portion of, of the, everybody who's enrolled. So as headcount drops, but if costs stay kind of flat, you have less revenue coming in to cover those costs um, as your, you know, your revenue kind of decreases. And so ultimately that's another cost driver that we have is just making up for the fact that we didn't see cost decrease as enrollment decreased. It kind of stayed flat. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. 
Um, the original increase was as high as 16.5%. Um, and then through some plan design changes that we'll talk about next, those ESI management um, changes, um, and, and looking more aggressively at, at some of our trend assumptions, we're able to bring that down to 9.9. To .9. Can you go to the next slide, please? So the really only the medical plan changes that are being proposed are on the community blue plan. The, the core and the buy-up plan will, will stay the same. So the community blue plan was introduced last year, and the idea when it was introduced is we're going to offer the, the best benefit on this plan or, or maybe the lowest deductible, right? The $500 deductible is lower than what was on the buy-up in the core plan. Um, and But you'd have to go to this narrow network, the community blue network that Blue Cross Blue Shield offers. Uh, but because the plan design is so rich, right, the deductible is so low, the contributions for that plan were um, ended up being higher than the core plan's contributions. They are lower than the, the buy-up for a lower deductible, but, but they're higher than the core, which is where the majority of East Baton Rouge's um, employees are enrolled. So some of the feedback um, that, that on this plan was they'd really like to have a lower cost option. So one of the ideas we had is take this plan and um, make it mirror the core plan design, but offer it on the community blue where we could recognize the full impact of the savings from the narrow network into the contributions. So with the savings in the plan design, the contributions are able to be considerably lower than that that's offered on the core plan currently. Um, so for those that are on the core plan now, they'll have an opportunity to basically have the same deductible, same out-of-pocket max they have today, but a much lower contribution if they're willing to use the narrow network um, and share those savings um, with, the, with the district or with the school board. Can you go to the next slide, please? Um, so here's the proposal for the, the contributions um, on the buy-up plan. Um, so... What you're looking at, I guess, on a on a per month basis is about 1881 for an employee only. That equates to $226 per year. Um, one of the things I'll call out, because it, it is kind of noticeable as you go through, you may notice the employee only total premium drops, but then for the dependent tiers, it, it goes up. The reason for that is every three to five years from an actuarial standpoint, we like to evaluate and make sure we're capturing the appropriate cost for those tiers. And over time, those ratios between the tiers and the plans, um, you know, may not represent the actual cost for that tier, and we have to realign those. So as we when we realign those for 2021 um, to be more accurate. Now, I want to emphasize that doesn't affect the employee contributions. It's more an internal budgeting standpoint um, for the school system to be able to make sure you're budgeting appropriately for everyone who's enrolled in that particular tier. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. On the core plan, the contribution would go from 87 to 95 on the employee only. That equates to $8.61 per month or $103 per year. Can you go to the next slide? On the community blue plan, you see a considerable decrease on those contributions of $73 per month or $877 less in contributions per year. So if you're someone on the core plan now, you'll be able to get the same plan design um, or same deductible and so forth but save almost $500 per year in contributions if you're willing to use the narrow network plan. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, all right, the, the next few slides are on the non-Medicare retiree piece. Um, so for them, the buy-up, it's the same percentage increase of 9.9, .9, which would equate to $41.21 per month. You can go to the next slide. On the core, the increase would be about $24.92 per month for a retiree only. Um, and on the community blue plan where we are now, it would be a decrease of $117 per month almost. Uh, keep going. Next slides for the Medicare retirees. So on the buy-up plan, the contributions would go up $42.60 per month. Um, next slide. On the core plan, the contributions would go up $33.72 um, per month for retiree only. Um, next slide. And then on the community blue, the plans would decrease about $60 per month. Um, and then for those that are on the core plan, they could save almost $309 annually by moving. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, so the recommendation would be that uh, the 9.9% increase that includes those changes to the community blue plan and some of the uh, pharmacy savings that we're going to um, talk about next with one of my other colleagues. 
Um, and then those, the numbers kind of show the savings that are brought about by those changes. So you can go to the next slide and I'm going to hand it over to, um, to my pharmacy colleague. Good evening. Uh, my name is Melanie Carlson. I know it shows Andrea Bryant on the screen. Um, I am presenting this evening. So I am a senior pharmacy consultant in Mercer's National Pharmacy Practice and I've been with Mercer almost nine years. My role with East Baton Rouge Paris School System is to provide um, strategic support, guidance, uh, recommendations for the pharmacy benefits that are offered to your employees and their dependents. Um, also on the Mercer team is one of our pharmacists, Andrea Bryant, who provides the clinical support um, and she was then able to be on the call today. So I am filling in with her. So I'll spend just the next few minutes talking about um, five programs, pharmacy programs that are offered by Express Scripts, your current pharmacy benefit manager. Um, Mercer has reviewed these programs and um, vetted them out and are making recommendations for the five programs that I will walk through. And so I'll walk through each one just at a high level, just to give you some, some highlights for each one. Um, just a, a couple of comments before I dive into that. Um, as Aaron mentioned earlier, the overall theme um, or intent of these pharmacy programs is to save East Baton Rouge money with minimal impact to your members and to provide ongoing management of the plan. And I also wanted to just call out that your plan is very, your pharmacy benefit plan is very well managed um, and which was demonstrated with the 2019 overall prescription drug, drug costs decreasing um, in comparison to the 2018 drug cost. The first program is called Rational Med. So again, these are all programs provided by Express Scripts. Um, this program is maximize or integrates data from various sources. So the medical, the pharmacy, the lab data, um, and uses all of that data to identify and alert um, providers and pharmacists of any potential safety issues, any gaps in care, um, any other health related concerns is, is the whole intent of that putting that program into place. There is a fee for that program to EBR, um, which amounts to 30,000 in year one. Uh, year two is 42,000. There is also an ROI, a return on investment guarantee associated with that of, a, of two to one, um, which generates estimated total pharmacy savings of 176,000 in year one, 201,000 in year two. Okay, the next program is called Save On SP. This is a program that maximizes the assistance available from pharma manufacturers to overall to lower overall plan cost. Um, and it identifies uh, certain specialty drugs as non-essential benefits, looks for those copay assistance programs, and therefore saves those programs will help your members as well as EBR, so both the plan and the members to um, experience significant cost savings. There is not a fee for this program. Um, the structure is that it's a shared savings program. So whatever savings are realized, 25% of those savings would go to um, save on an ESI. So the expected return on investment, there's not a guarantee associated with it, but the, the expected return on investment is annual plan savings of about 774,000. Next slide. The next program is the Advanced Opioid Management Program. Um, this program is another um, uh, type of a safety program that helps avoid abuse or misuse of opioids um, using various strategies and method methods at the pharmacy as well as the physician and through member channels. The fee for this to EBR is the 39 cents PMPM. PM. Um, that's about 47,000 per year for that program. 
Um, there's not an ROI guarantee. It's not really meant to be a savings. It's really meant to avoid that that misuse or abuse, avoid um, or reduce uh, ER visits and hospitalizations. Okay, the next program is the Affordable Care Act or ACA HIV PrEP coverage program. Um, this, this is not really an optional program. This is a program that's required for any non-grandfathered plans such as East Baton Rouge. So um, th this isn't something you really decide or not decide. It is a requirement um, for being non-grandfathered. The purpose of this program is to um, allow coverage at a zero dollar cost share for patients who are uh, taking certain HIV medications for, for prevention of HIV versus treatment of HIV. Okay, next slide. The last program is called the HIV Care Value Program. This program is meant to um, avoid or mitigate any potential increases in trend that may result as from implementing that coverage requirement that we just talked about, the HIV PrEP program. So it's to just monitor and um, mitigate any trend there and making sure that there's a positive impact on the adherence of the drugs. Um, and so associate, there's no fee with that, but associated with that is a, uh, a cost trend cap that's specific to EBR. And ESI has set that trend cap at 6%. So again, there's no fee, um, but that is something that we would also recommend EBR consider implementing for 2021. Any questions about any of the pharmacy programs? The board is clear as far as questions. Anyone have any questions or comments for our presenters, especially related to our last one with the Express Scripts Pharmacy Programs? All right, seeing none. Uh, is there any additional pieces to your presentation that you would like to present to us? We just have a few more slides on some of the ancillary things. It'll be pretty quick. Um, if, you go, if you go two more slides down for Humana. So this is for the, the Medicare eligible retirees um, on the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, some great news is, is we got a two year rate guarantee from them with a decrease in premium. So the retiree contributions will be able to stay flat and there'll be um, uh, a small savings to the school board. You can go to the next slide. Um, so, yep, same with the PPO. You can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so savings about $194,000 and it's a two year guarantee. So the good news there. Um, you can go to the next slide. So a few more of the um, ancillary pieces for the FSA. The FSA um, contract is up, but the fee typically doesn't get, um, the renewal doesn't really come in until sometime in, in Q, late Q3 or to Q4. Um, so to authorize the superintendent and staff to negotiate that when that comes in. And you go to the next slide, go to the next one. Same with the stop loss. Stop loss fees are typically not finalized until um, closer to the end of 2020. So authorize again the superintendent and the staff to negotiate and execute that, that coverage when that renewal um, is ready. You can go to the next slide. Um, go to the next one. So Solarix, currently East Baton Rouge uses Solarix for their benefits and information system um, through Humana. Unfortunately, Solarix and Humana's partnerships coming to an end. Um, so we're going to that trend, that uh, service needs to be transitioned. Um, MetLife, who currently um, East Baton Rouge uses for some voluntary benefits, offers a partnership with Solarix. Um, so, so we're recommending using going to the partnership with MetLife um, effective July 1st of this year. And so, unfortunately, a mid-year conversion is needed. Um, they are offering no rate fee increase for the mid-year change, but then a um, 25 cent fee increase as of 1 1 um, 2021. Can you go to the next piece? I think that's that is it. So do you, um, I'll turn it back over. If you have any questions for me or for Melanie, please let us know. Thank you guys so much for your uh, your presentation. Um, I don't see any additional questions from our board. So again, thank you, Mr. Mercer and Ms. Bar well, not Ms. Bryant, but 
that's what the name says. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for your presentation and your time. And I know if there are additional questions, the board members will get to the appropriate folks so that we can ask those questions. Um, I just refreshed the comments from the public and I don't see. Do we have a motion, Ms. Um, Orman? Yes, Mr. Lannis and Mr. Godek. OK, perfect. I just wanted to make sure um, I just refreshed public comment and I don't see any additional comments. I will check one last time to make sure. Uh-oh. All right, um, Ms. Jones, if you want to double check for me, I don't see any on my end after refreshing. Um, so we will go I don't back. I do see to any, Mr. Howard. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones, thank you, Ms. Orman. We will go back to the board. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Madam Secretary. Please vote. Mr. Blue? Yes. Mr. Lannis? Yay. Mr. Howard? Yes. Ms. Collins? Yay. Ms. Ware Jackson? Yes. Mr. Godet? Yes. Ms. Bernard? Yes. Mr. Tapman? Yes. The motion carries. The motion carries. Thank you. Our next item for consideration is not an item for consideration. We are um, the announcement of meetings and dates. Give me one second. My computer is going to doing its thing again. All right, the announcement of meetings. Um, the Lehigh School Renaming Committee public forum to be held July 13, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Professional Development Center, PC 3000. North Sherwood Forest Boulevard Oversight Committee meetings to be held July 14, 2020 at 5 o'clock p.m. at the IRC 1022 South Foster Drive. Some or all board members may attend and the regular board meeting is scheduled for this Thursday. Well, next Thursday, July 16, 2020 at 5 o'clock p.m. at the Professional Development Center, also known as the PDC at 3000 North Sherwood Forest Boulevard. That is the end of our um, announcements of meetings and I move that with this meeting is adjourned.